Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. <coughs> we are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The book contains 230 problem solving questions. It has 174 data sufficiency questions. We have already solved every single math problem from this book. If you're interested in watching any of the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through to 50. Right now we are in the process of redoing the problems and we are on page number 164. Please turn to it, page number 164, the very first problem. Number 83, we are told that we have four more, four more women than men. So four more women than men. So number of women is, whatever the number of men is, four more than that. We are also told that the total is 10, which means men plus women is 10. And the question simply is, how many women do we have? It's very straightforward, very simple problems. We have two very simple linear equations. Let's solve for m here, put it in here. So m equals 10 minus w. Let's put it in here. w equals 10 minus w plus 4. To bring the w here, we get 2w equals 14 and w equals 7. Very simple, very straightforward problem. Nothing to it. Let's go to the next one. In the next problem, we are told that we are investing. We are investing ten thousand dollars for a year at eight percent compounded semi-annually. Question simply is how much interest we're going to earn? Well, it's very straightforward. Listen, the eight percent, one percent, one percent of ten thousand, one percent of ten thousand is simply you write down your ten thousand, you knock out the two zero, one percent of ten thousand is one hundred, and therefore eight percent would be eight hundred. Would be eight hundred. Now the now the fact that now the fact that the interest is being compounded once in the entire year, at the end of six months, it's going to be compounded at the rate of 8% per year. This interest rate is always given per annum basis. Interest rates are always expressed on per annum, per year, base, on a yearly basis. So at the end of six months, we will not, we will not earn 8% of 10,000, we will earn only 4% because it's half a year. But anyway, the point here is that the fact that we are going to, the fact that the money is going to be compounded once at the end of six months, is going to make just a little, it's going to make a difference of just a little bit uh, more than this amount. That's it. We're going to earn a little bit more than eight hundred dollars. It's not going to be a huge difference. Do you understand? And the only answer, jo only answer choice that I see there, that is a little bit more than eight hundred, is eight hundred and sixteen dollars. Eight hundred and sixteen dollars. That's our answer. That's our answer. We really don't have to actually do anything here. But if you insist, we'll do it out here. So here's what's going on. At the end of six months, at the end of six months, we'll earn 4%. 4% of 10,000 is 400 at the end of six months. That $400 is added to our $10,000. And we'll start our balance. We'll start our second half of the year with this amount, 10,400. And at the end of the year, at the end of the year, at the end of 12 months, at the end of 12 months, we earn 4% of 10,400. Question is, what is 4% of 10,400? Uh, 4 of 10, well, we know 1 again, 1% of 10,400 is simply going to be 10,400. We write it down and we knock out the two zeros. That's $104. That's the 1%. 1% 1 of 10,400 is simply $104. And therefore, 4% is going to be 4 times the amount. 
four times that amount is $416. So in the second half of the year we earn $416. In the first half of the year we earn $400. That additional $16 that we see is due to compounding. That $16 represents 4% of this $400. Because this $400, beginning of the second half of the year, this $400 is also earning interest. And it earns 4%. 1% of 400 is $4, and therefore 4% of 400 is $16, that's the 16 additional dollars because of compounding. The total amount of interest that we are earning is $816, that's all. Let's move on then, next problem. Problem number 85. In 85, we have 0 0.0036 times 0 0.28 over 0 0.04 times 0 0.01 times 0 0.003. Now, the simplest, easiest, quickest way to take care of this problem is to convert somehow these numbers into whole numbers. Don't, deal, don't try to solve them in a, as, as decimals. You could actually multiply out the decimal numbers, but that will be a help. Try to convert them into whole numbers. The question is, how do we go about doing that? Well, let's find out, shall we? Here we see 0 0.04. If you want to multiply this, if you want to multiply this quantity by 100, if you want to multiply 0 0.04 by 100, it will become 4. Similarly, if you want to multiply this quantity by 10, it will become 1. And similarly, if we were to multiply this quantity, 0 0.003 by 1000, it will become 3. So here we have three zeros, we need, to, we need more 1000 has three zeros. Here we have a 10 which has one zero, so here we need two zeros, two plus one plus three, we need six zeros. We need to multiply the bottom quantity by 10 raised to six. Since we are multiplying the bottom quantity by 10 raised to 6, we need to do the same thing to the top, otherwise it will, it will, not, be, uh, it will not remain balanced. If we multiply top and divide by the same number, then essentially we are multiplying it by 1. So let's multiply the top number by 10 raised to 6 as well. And let's see what happens. And let's see what happens, okay? I need the room, so we have to raise this part. So here we have on the top we have, well, we never discussed the top part, did we? Now what's going to happen on the top is that we need here, we need to move this decimal 1, 2, 3, 4, we need to multiply it by 10 raised to 4. Similarly this we need to multiply it by 10 raised to 1. 10 raised to 1 and 10 raised to 4, that's 10 raised to 5. We have 10 raised to 6 here. On the top we have an extra 10, which is not a big deal, it will just sit there. It will just sit there and look pretty, that's all. So let's do that here. Point zero zero three six times ten raised to four. This is one quantity times two point eight times ten raised to one. This is another quantity, and then times ten. You see, ten raised to four and ten raised to one. That's five, and then another another one right there. So that takes care of ten raised to six. Similarly, on the bottom, we're going to break we're going to break this up into 0 0.04 times 10 raised to 2 times 0 0.01 times 10 raised to 1 times 0 0.003 times 10 raised to 3. And we'll see what the, what it gives us. This quantity 0 0.0036 times 10 raised to 4 is simply 36. We're going to move it four places: one, two, three, four, as we discussed. So that gives us 36. This is going to give us 28, and that's just 10. On the bottom, this is going to give us 4. This is going to give us 1. And that's going to give us just 3. And that's it, we are done. And that's all there is. That's all there is. We are done. 12 times 3 is 4 times 3 is 12. 4 times 3 is 12, and there are 3 12s and a 36. So we cross this out and 36 goes, and that's it, we're done. That's our answer. 28 times 3. How much is 28 times 3? 
So how the hell do I know? I know what 25 times 3 is. 25 times 3 is 75. That I do know. And therefore 28 times 3 will be 9 more than that. 75 plus 10 would be 85, so it's 84. So 3 times 28 is 84, times 10 is 840. There is your answer. 840 is the final answer. Let's move on to the next one, shall we? Just give me a second. Number 86. Number 86, we are told that A A makes 120 units in 40 seconds. Well, if A makes 120 units in 40 seconds, well, this, I need the room obviously. Let me start again. This is 86. A makes 120 units in 40 seconds. We are told that B makes 100 in 20 seconds. Now here's what's going on. They tell us how many A can make in 40 seconds and they tell us how many B can make in 20 seconds. If it makes 120 in 40 seconds, that implies that A must make a must make 60 in 20 seconds. So A is making 60 in 20 seconds, B is making 100 in 20 seconds, therefore A and B together, we need the room. We really need the room, so we need to erase this thing now. So that implies that A and B together must make, must make 60 plus 100 160 in 20 seconds. The question is how many can they make in 200 seconds? How many can they make in 200 seconds? Well, that's a very simple straightforward proportion problem. Let's set it up here. So here is our second and here are the units. We know that in 20 seconds they make 160 units. The question is how long will it take them to make 200 units? How long will it take them? That's all. We just have to solve for x. Cross multiply and solve for x. That's all. So let's do that, shall we? So x will simply be 20 times 200 divided by 160. x would be 20 times 200 over 160. Well, that's quite straightforward. Divide top and bottom by 10. That takes care of that part. Divide top and bottom by 6, 4, so that becomes 4 and that becomes 5. And divide top and bottom by 4 one more time. This 4 goes away and this becomes 5. So let's say it's 5 times 5, 25 seconds. It will take them 25 seconds to make 200 units. 25 seconds to make 200 units, which actually makes perfect sense if you think about it, because before they were making 160 seconds. Now they have to make 200 units, uh, before they were making 160 units, now they have to make 200 units, that's 40 units more than before, 40 is one fourth of that amount. They have to make one fourth more than before, 160 as opposed to 200. Well, if they're going to have to make one fourth more units, they will take one fourth more amount of time. One fourth of 20 is 5 seconds, so instead of 20 seconds, they will take 25 seconds. It makes perfect sense. Let's go to the next one, shall we? 87. Number 87. Let's see what we have for 87. We are told that n is an integer greater than 6. Question is which must be divisible by 3. They are giving us, a, they're giving us a, obviously 5 quantities in the 5 answer choices and our job is to figure out which must be, which must be something that has to be divisible by 3. Let's find out, shall we? Well they tell us that n is greater than 6. So the easiest and the simplest thing is to plug in a number more than 6. 
How about a 7? It has to be an integer. It has to be a whole number. Let's plug in 7. See what happens. So let's plug in n equal to 7. Here is answer choice A. A says n plus n plus 1 times n minus 4. And remember, we are plugging in n equal to 7. So that gives us 7 times 8. Neither 7 nor 8 is divisible by 3. n minus 4, 7 minus, 7 minus 4 is going to be 7 minus 4 is going to be 3. So that quantity now, this, this, is, this quantity is going to be divisible by 3 because it's 7 times 8 times 3, which means this quantity can be divided by 3. That is fine. Let's look at B. We will not be able to get rid of all the answer choices. You understand? We're going to have to go at least two rounds. In some cases, even three rounds. When you're plugging in, very rarely you're able to knock out four answer choices in one round. Answer choice B. N times N plus 2 times n minus 1 again n times n plus 2 times n minus 1 n is 7 n is 7 so it's 7 times 9 we are done this is 9 9 is divisible by it doesn't matter what this is this quantity is divisible by 3 let's go to C C is n times n plus 3 times n minus 5 7 which is not divisible by 3 times 10, so far so good and n minus 5, n is 7, 7 minus 5 is 2, so there you go neither 2 nor, se nor, nor 10 nor 7 is divisible by 3 none of these quantities is divisible by 3 and therefore their product is not going to be divisible by 3 C is gone C is no longer a contender, a C is a has been let's look at D Again, 7 times n plus 4, n is 7, 7 plus 4 is going to be 11. So far so good, neither 7 nor 11 is a multiple of 3. n minus 2 is going to be 7, minus 2 is going to be 5. Oh, neither, neither is this one. D is going also, this is very good. Let's look at E. Answer choice E. Answer choice E is n times n plus 4 times n minus 2. Again, very quickly, n is 7, 7 plus 4, did I, is it 7 plus 4 or 7 plus 5? It's 7 plus 5. It's n plus 5. Answer choice E is n plus 5. Let me double check, it's 87, n plus 5. n is 7, and we are plugging in 7, 7 plus 5 is 12, and 12 is divisible by 3, doesn't matter what this is, 12 is divisible by 3, so this one works. So A, B, and E remain, C and D are gone. Let's have a second round, shall we? Let's have a second round. And this time we're going to plug in N equal to 8. N equal to 8. We're going to plug in N equal to 8. So we have 8 times 8 plus 1, which is 9. And that works, so that A stays. B says, B says let's line them up properly. B says 8 times 8 plus 2, which is 10. So far, so good. And 8 minus 1. 8 minus 1 is going to be 7. Oh, that's no good. Neither 8, nor 10, nor 7 are multiples of 3. So B, B is gone. Let's look at E. Let's keep our fingers crossed that we can knock out E. Then in which case the answer would be A. So we have 8 times 8 plus 5 is 13. So far, so good. Times... 8 minus 2, oh, blast it. 8 minus, oh, 8 minus, did I miswrite it here? This should not have been 8 minus 2, because I remember the answer was A. It's 8 minus 6. I'm sorry, I'm not paying attention. It's 8 minus 6, and 8 minus 6 is, and the reason I did not catch myself, the reason I did not catch myself is because I didn't bother to finish this thing here. 8 minus 6, 8, n is 8, n is 8, 8 minus 6 will be 2. And neither 2 nor 13 nor 8 are multiples of 3. Therefore, this product is not going to be divisible by 3. The answer turns out to be A. Let's go on then. Number 88. Number 88.
In number 88 we are, we are told that a batch of 20,000 units, 20,000 tools cost $10,000. That's our fixed cost. That's our fixed cost. That's what we have to pay a flat amount of $10,000 for which we get a batch of 20,000 tools plus we have to pay additional amount per tool. 10,000 is the fixed amount we have to pay. And in addition to that, we are told, we are told that we have to pay three dollars per tool, and that's our marginal cost. That's our marginal cost. The question simply is, how much profit are we going to make? The question simply is, how much profit are we going to make per unit if we were to sell this thing at eight dollars per unit? Sold for eight dollars per unit. Well, let's find out, shall we? The fixed cost right here. The fixed cost is this amount here. Fixed cost per unit is simply ten thousand dollars divided by twenty thousand units. 10,000 divided by 20,000 is 50 cents per unit. It's half a dollar per unit of fixed cost. Marginal cost, we are told, is $3 per unit. Marginal cost is $3 per unit. Marginal cost actually is, means additional cost per unit. Marginal cost per unit would be redundant. Fixed cost per unit is 350, and the marginal cost is three dollars so the total cost per unit is three dollars and fifty cents is three dollars and fifty cents we are selling it for eight dollars eight dollars minus three dollars would have been five dollars eight dollars minus three and a half is going to be four and a half dollars that's our profit our profit per unit is going to be four and a half dollars per unit four and a half dollars per unit is simply eight minus three and a half. Three dollars per unit we have to pay for the tool, the marginal cost plus the fixed cost of fifty cents per unit it works out to be because we have to pay ten thousand dollars flat amount for twenty thousand units. For a batch of twenty thousand units. Let's go to the next one, number eighty nine. Number eighty nine. We are told that we bought 100 units for Q dollars. Well, that implies that the cost per unit has to be, well, if we are paying Q dollars for 100 units, cost per unit would have to be Q over 100 dollars. They further go on to tell us that we are going to sell it they further go on to tell us that we're going to sell it with a 50% markup. 50% markup. But if it's a 50% markup, that implies that the price would have to be, price per unit, would have to be three and a half, not three and a half rather, three halves, three and a half, three halves rather, not, I keep saying three and a half, three halves represents 100% plus a 50%. 3 halves represents the 50% markup. The original amount plus the plus the 50% markup. 3 halves of that amount. And that's it. That's our price per unit and that represents 50% markup. The amount itself plus half of that amount, which is one and a half of that amount or three halves of that amount. That's it, we are done. That's our answer. The answer is 3Q over 200. 3Q over 200 is the answer, whatever that happens to be. That's answer choice A. Let's move on then. Very last one, number 90. Give me one second.
we are told that we have increasing sequence of 10 consecutive integers. Increasing sequence, 90, increasing sequence of 10 consecutive integers. We are also told that the first, sum of the first First five is five sixty. Question simply is what's the sum of the last fives? Well, we are told that the sum of the first five is first five is five sixty. Let's make a use of that information, okay? Sum of the first five is five sixty. That implies that the average of the first five must be five sixty divided by five because their sum is five sixty. You with me? If you divide five sixty their sum by five, that will be the average. And that will be five has one five into it, six has one five into it. The remaining one goes and joins the zero, becomes 10, and 10 has two fives into it. So that's 112. Now what does 112 tell us? It tells us that because of the fact that they are consecutive integers, they don't even have to be consecutive, as long as they are evenly spaced. As long as they are evenly spaced. For example, the, the average, of, average of 87, 90, and 93, the average of 87, 90, and 93 is 90, because of the fact that they are evenly spaced. They are three units apart. As long as they are evenly spaced, the average is always the middle one. Every, or average is always the middle one. As long as they are evenly spaced, the average of 7, 14, 21, 28, and 35, again, is 21. Because they are evenly spaced. Here they are evenly spaced because they happen to be consecutive. But they don't have to be consecutive. The point here is that they are evenly spaced. Because of the fact that these, these five integers that we are talking about, they are evenly spaced, their average is 112, that tells us that 112 is the middle number. Are you with me? 112 must be the middle number. If 112 is the middle number, the one before that is 111, one before that is 110, one after that is 113, one after that is 140. Those are the first five numbers. That's not what we are interested in. We are interested in finding out the sum of the last five. Let's find out, shall we? So the last five are going to be this one ends at 114, so the next one is going to be 115, 116, 117, 118, and 119. What do you notice? Let's erase this part so we don't get confused. What do you notice? What, what do you suppose the sum is going to be of these five numbers? Do you notice anything? What we should notice is that each one of these number is five more than this one. 110 versus 115. 116 versus 111. There are five more. Each one of them is five more. We are told that the sum of the first five is 560. If the sum of the first five is 560, that implies that the sum of the last five, sum of the last five is going to be 560 plus 25. Because there are five more. Five, 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 and five, and five. So you just add 25 to the sum of the first five and you're done. And the answer is 560 plus 25, 585 is our answer. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.